Oh Asus, how thin those bezels are. So many pixels, I can't keep count. The RGB is so immense, so many colors. Oh my god, 1440p is such a low response time. Oh. <coughs> Oh, I swear, I, I just woke up from the strangest dream. Looks like my colors are a little off. Color settings on monitors, or should I say color calibration settings on this ASUS BG27AQL1A. That is always going to be a mouthful. And honestly, this has to be the best 1440p monitor on the market today for the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. But although it is the best, it does require a little bit of color calibration right out of the box to be the best of all time. Color calibration is the name of the video, so without further ado, let's get right into it. And don't worry if you do not have this specific monitor, I'm actually in the middle of making another video that pertains to any other monitor that is out there that needs color calibration to make it into a top notch monitor. And when that video comes out, it's gonna be a pinned comment in the comment section down below. But either way, this video should be able to give you an understanding of what you need to do. So how do we calibrate this beast of a monitor? Well, let's start by going to this fabulous website called ratings.com. A link will be in the description. So once you get to ratings.com, just type in the monitor that you're using. In this case, we are using the ASUS VG27AQL1A. And just scroll down to the section called Calibration. If you can't find the section called Calibration, all you have to do is just Control F to find and then just type in Calibration and that should take you right over to the section called Post Calibration. Once you find this section, you're gonna see the column called Pre-Calibration and then Post Calibration. And as you could tell, without calibration, this monitor is, um, how do I say this, uh, off. So under post calibration, you should see a little link that is marked here. You just wanna click on that and that will download an ICC file, which you're gonna use later. And you might ask, why do I use ratings.com? Well, because ratings.com literally is full of experts that all they do is just test monitors, TVs, and other peripherals, and then they give reviews and uh, they go through basically everything that you need to know. So, you know, I call myself Matthew the best, but uh, sometimes, you know, I gotta, I gotta pass the mantle every now and then to people that might know uh, a little bit more than me. <laughs> Once you download the ICC file, you're just gonna head on over to your desktop and then you're just gonna type in color management and click enter. Now under color management, you're gonna see under devices, you're gonna see a, a bunch of different um, display option and printers and whatnot. What you have to do is click on the option that represents the ASUS monitor that we're trying to calibrate. In my case, it is display number two. And then once you do that, you're gonna have to click on use my settings for this device. Just click on that little check mark, it's gonna go like that, right? Then you're gonna click on add, and then you're gonna click on browse, and then you're gonna go find wherever you have saved that ICC profile. For me, I already have it um, on this color management thing, but I'm not gonna do it again, but all you have to do is just click on it, click on add, and then that's it. And you should see one of these ICC profiles should just pop up and it is as simple as that. But actually there is one more thing you can do. Um, if you go over to the advanced settings, just click on change system defaults. And then from here, go back over to advanced and then check off use Windows display calibration. Very important, you should do that as well. And then from here, you can also go over to calibrate display. And then here is what you wanna do to uh, make sure the colors are right. So if it's supposed to be white, it's not like a reddish white or anything like that. And this is so important because actually this monitor bleeds a little bit on the red side. So we need to fix that by, uh, you know, doing this process. So what we're gonna do is just drag over this file to the monitor that you're currently using. In this case, uh, is the ASUS monitor, of course, duh. Um, then we're gonna click on next oh, down here at the bottom. Click on it again. And this is with the gamma. Just follow the steps that it tells you to do. And uh, everybody's monitor is gonna be a little bit different. So it really depends on what you're doing. But 
If you don't know, you have to use the on-screen display from your monitor itself in order to adjust these settings. Do not use the color tab in the uh, the windows because it's only gonna alter the colors within the windows. And in order to access the little on-screen hub on the monitor itself, all you have to do is just click on the little back button on the back of the monitor and that is gonna open up the menu. And in case for whatever reason, a bunch of options are grayed out, that is because you have HDR enabled. And if you don't know how to turn off HDR on Windows, all you have to do is just right click on the desktop, go over to display settings, and then pick on whichever monitor you're trying to turn off HDR, scroll down a little bit more, and then under use HDR, you just turn it to the off side. So after you pick on the gamma, click on next, uh, click on next again, and then you just go over to brightness, you know, do the same thing, same process, make sure the colors look great. Click on next again, do the contrast now, do that part, make sure the wrinkles are viewable. Then you click on next. And remember at the bottom here, it actually gives you like a little hint of what you should be doing. So like, for example, here it's saying you gotta make sure you have that contrast as high as possible without losing any details in the wrinkles. So make sure you do that, then click on next again. And then here is uh, the fun part. So remember, like I said earlier, do not alter these tabs here. Remember, cause these tabs here coincide with the windows. So if you do it on here and then you switch over to your PS5, well, your PS5 is not gonna get the same effect. So you gotta make sure you use the on-screen display in order to make these changes. Once you finish doing that, you can click on next and remember, we're not saving this. All we're doing is using it to change the settings on our uh, our monitor, right? So yeah, click on next. It's gonna ask you to uh, use this current calibration or previous. Just click on cancel. That's all you have to do. And you should be good to go on this part. And so for my monitor, whenever I'm on Windows, I have it set that it is in racing mode and I have the brightness at 82 and the contrast at 85. For the color balance, I have the red set at 77, the green set at 91, and then the blue set at 100. This is what I found to be the best for me, but obviously it depends on your monitor and your preference. But for me, I feel like this works out perfectly. All my colors are exactly what I intended to be, and it looks amazing. And these settings that I just finished going over are great for people that are using this monitor for daily browsing or for people that are looking for the absolute most accurate colors. But Matthew, I bought this monitor for the PS5, not the PC. And last time I checked, the PlayStation doesn't run all Windows. Dislike, unsub, you're dumb. Well, don't you worry, Billy Bob, I got you covered. If you're a FPS gamer, then these are not really the most ideal settings for you. In order to get the best settings, what you're gonna have to do is go back over to your on-screen display and make sure you save this specific profile so that whenever you plan on using this monitor for like everyday activities, you have this profile saved. Now, whenever you wanna do any particular gaming, you wanna change the profile to the next one. Now, in order to do this, all you have to do is just click on the on-screen display, let it pop up, scroll all the way down to my favorite, then go over to customize settings and then just save one of the profiles under setting one or setting two. Now for your next profile, it's gonna be everything that has to do with gaming. Now what you're gonna wanna do is after you save one of the profiles, just go over to the next profile that maybe it's like settings two or settings three, one of the ones that you're not using and you wanna load up one of those profiles. That way it just starts you off on a clean slate and you can start from fresh. If you're on the PS5 and you're trying to turn off the HDR, all you have to do is just hold down the PS button and then it should pull up the menu and then just go over to settings, go down over to screen and video, click on video output and then under HDR, you just set it to off. And I know some of you guys are gonna be a little bit butthurt that you have to turn off HDR, but the reason why you have to turn off HDR is that HDR itself enhances the colors. So it'll make whites more whiter blacks more blacker and for FPS games you definitely do not want that because if you're in a dark environment it's gonna look even darker and if you have enemies hiding in a dark environment camping you just won't be able to see them so turning this off will allow you to do alterations within the menu in order to have the best settings now for these settings go all the way to the top where it says gaming and then for overdrive you want to leave that at 60 variable refresh rate leave it on 
game plus don't worry about that game visual you want to change that to fps and then shadow boost you want to change it to level 3. for brightness i left it at 90 contrast i left it at 80 and the rest of the options within the image panel i left them at either off or at zero under the color panel i left the color temperature at normal saturation at 42 and skin tone at natural so the reason why I chose these specific settings is mainly because whenever you're playing FPS games, you're not really looking for like color accuracy. You're most likely looking for something that's going to help you win more fights. And by leaving it at FPS mode, it makes the colors much more dynamic. So whenever you're actually in a gunfight, you could see people much more easier with this. And by leaving shadow boost at level three, if you see people in a darker area of the map, or whatever it may be, you will be able to see them. And this is a perfect example right here. This is a corner of the firing range within Apex Legends that is typically super dark if I were to leave it on the best color accuracy mode with uh, HDR enabled. But once we change that and we go over to the settings that I told you guys about, look at what a difference it makes. The area is just so much more illuminated and I can see the top of the roof, whereas otherwise I would not be able to see the top. And if the color is like too much for you to handle, what you can do is go over to the color panel within the settings on the monitor and change the skin tone from natural over to yellowish. I actually found that this is slightly better and um, might be a little bit more favorable for some people if they just aren't too happy with the red color and uh, just want to change it up a little bit. If you don't want to do that, what you can do instead is go over to the saturation tab and all you want to do is just change it from like 42 and to like maybe like 38 or maybe something a little bit lower. And this will allow you to have not as much saturation, but you still have the same results. And remember guys, this process is always different for each and every one of you guys. For my monitor, it did run a little bit on the red side. Maybe for you, it's a little on the blue side. So it really just comes up to preference and what you prefer. Well guys, that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any questions whatsoever when it comes to altering the calibrations with your monitor monitor whether it be an asus monitor or something else don't worry just ask it away and i'll be happy to help you out and as always make sure you guys follow me on twitch and instagram i always post behind the scenes content and if you guys have any questions i also answer you as well on twitch plus you can stay along for some amazing gameplay because i uh I am one of the best players out there if you, if you guys didn't already know that. <laughs> but anyways guys, my name is Matthew, thank you so much for watching, but as always, peace out.